I'll be honest with you, I never had a childhood. I went from being a man from the age of eight, nine years old, and then I was told at 40 and I'm having a kid, so I didn't really get to play in the playground. Who was sort of your mentor? Honestly, nobody. I have myself. I have to get myself through every situation on my own. So trust is a major issue for me. So obviously my mum weren't really about, dad's not about, then who do I trust? You know, when you've got to make a decision, you've really got to make that decision. You've a single or swim. So I've had it from young, so that's why I'm fearless. Fearless is something that a lot of people don't have. Me personally, you have to keep pushing. And I always encourage people, you need to push beyond what you think you can achieve to achieve what you really want to achieve. When is it all enough? <sighs> But today I've got an amazing guest. He started off from very humble beginnings and he started off his first businesses at a very young age. From there, he's been look after famous footballers. And we're gonna deep dive all into it and how he became a British actor. So I'd like to welcome Daniel Johnson. Welcome back to Take A Seat. Now I've heard a lot of you say, why is it called Take A Seat? Well. Sometimes when you get any sort of news, what do you do? You just take a seat. When you see a psychotherapist, you take a seat. You know, when you share something good and say, hey man, take a seat. And that's what we want to do. It's not just about business, mindset, journeys. It's all about, you know, what is behind that person? Like, let's relax, chill out. This is a nice, easy conversation. And yeah, I want the money. I want the glitz. I want the glamour. But you know, like, what what made this person? What made this thing? What made, what inspired this person? You know what I mean? So this is what the podcast is all about, in case you're thinking, how is this one different to others? But today, I've got an amazing guest. He started off from very humble beginnings, and he started off his first businesses at a very young age. From there, he's been look after famous footballers, and we're going to deep dive all into it and how he became a British actor. So I'd like to welcome Daniel Johnson. How's Thanks it going? for having me, man. You, you good? You okay? All good, man. All good. Thank you yeah. for coming down, bro. Do you know what? It was uh, a bit emotional this morning. I left home this morning at half past five after the gym. So I, I'm already an hour in from half past four. Wow. Then it's half five. I've got my driver. Come down. Obviously, it's traffic. But it's cool, man. It's a... Uh, Pleasure to be here and thanks for having me. Yeah, man, lovely. So is that how you start your day in the morning? I'll be honest with you. I start my days. I often start my days from around four or five o'clock in the morning. Really? Um, I get my work done from four to about, I'll say about 10, 11 o'clock. Um, most of my business partners are, well, it's global. So I've got Australia, I've got New York, I've got Philippines. You with me? So it's all different time scales. So I said, listen, let's just set a time in the morning. So I work around from four, I start the gym, go for a swim or do a tie box here. Then I'll start my day from about six, seven, coffee, phone calls, emails. Yeah. Um, and then we just slowly get some deals done. So many of my guests say they like to start their day really early. It's, it's mind over matter for me because if, if someone wakes up at nine o'clock, for, for me, you've missed five hours already. Yeah. You're with me. There's a lot of things that you can do um, in five hours. Do you think the mind works differently at that moment? 100%. That? I'm, I'm very sharp in the morning. Come one nine, one two o'clock in the afternoon. I've done a full day by then. I'm really just to just say that's me finishing up this today. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I love that, man. I love that. So, how does your week normally look at like look like like in terms of because I know you do quite a few things at the moment. Yeah. How yeah. do you juggle it all? Well, part of being a, uh, an entrepreneur is gauging what businesses that you're in, what what's um, time is very important for me. So I allocate time where it's needed um, in the intercept parts, the intercept parts of the roles that I'm involved in with the businesses um, outside of what I do with the acting, obviously. Um, sometimes I'm traveling as well. So I, I try and schedule a month or two in advance. And have you got any systems or do you leverage anything in terms of helping you in your businesses, like in terms of people or AI? Or I've got a great team around me. You know, I'm extremely blessed. Um, I started from very humble beginnings and I built myself an amazing team. It's almost like if you play for Man United, you can't score, sorry, you can't run a team with one guy, can you? You can't. You need 11 players on the pitch. Um, and I've got a team, um, very small, but very powerful globally. So it helps me to manoeuvre how I need to manoeuvre when I want to move. Um, I've never had a job in my life. I've been an entrepreneur from young. And I think that's a mindset that's... Uh, it's it's 
it's almost an upbringing, but it's not. I believe it's a generation thing. So there's two, three generations behind us. Everyone's had a hard upbringing. They, they say about how hard it's been and they've had to work extremely hard. The only bit I've got from that for me that works for me is sometimes you have to outwork people, which means if you've got that embedded in you, you can do that because I can outwork most people um, and that gets me where I'm to today. Whereas some people have gone to uni college, paid for a private school, and they're still not in the position that they should be in because of life's not like that. If, if there was a path that's just written, right, school, university, degree, guaranteed income, the whole world would do it. It's, it's not that. So I built a, you know, a nice little network there and I built a nice team, but it hasn't been easy. How do you, where does that drive, where does that thing come from of, of working? Like, what makes that happen? Honestly, growing up in a small apartment, flat, um, with a brother, with a dad that's in and out of prison, and having a responsibility as a young man from young, really young. Uh, some, some people sing, some people sing and go under, you know, alcoholics turn to drugs I just turned my negative in, into passion to get myself out of the situation so when everyone was saying how nice the day was in our area I said in my head I'm already living in a mansion because I could see myself where I need to be already at such a young age being surrounded with poverty for quite a long time uh, but I would see things so I grew up in an affluent area but we didn't have the money in London so that was even more pressure on top of not having money to see a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, a Range Rover, and you're walking, scoring pimps old, it's not, it's not great. So, you know, I've, I've had to look myself in the mirror from young, being a young guy, not having a, an absent father around to make decisions for myself, not just for my mum and my younger brother, but for me as a person, what am I going to do in this hole? I can either keep digging down or I can reach for the stars. And for me, the stars are too close. So, you know, it's a, it's almost like you have to be a, a beast to survive or you sink. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I really like that. Who was sort of your mentor or role model when, you know, your dad wasn't present? Or did honestly, you have somebody? Honestly, nobody. I had myself. Because it was either you had the drug dealers, the gangsters, one side. And then you had the bankers, the corporate, the millionaires, the other side. And I was in the middle with nothing and no one. So I could only rely on me. When I'm in a situation, I can't ring left, I can't ring right. I can just rely on myself. So I have to get myself through every situation on my own. Sometimes it can look like um, an easy route just to see the brothers on the road. Mm. They're showing you the money. They're showing you just got to move a little thing here and there, you know, and people can be easily swayed, especially when they don't have that male role model yep. figure in front of them. What stopped you from doing that? Listen, I'm not perfect. We've all made mistakes in life. But what I've learned is there's only one road for that. It's prison or death. There's no happy ending. You never see a gangster that's had a happy ending, never been shot, stabbed, prison, how many times, institutionalized. and lies. Lost families, lost his best mates. He's got a bundle of cash, but how long is it going to last for? Year, two years, ten years, five years. The end of it, we... what makes me laugh is everyone watches gangster films and they get gassed. Mm. They're like, yeah, that's it. I'm going to make some mad pee. I'm going to do this. But they don't show what the end result is. You either die or you're in prison for life. To me, both of them is death. Me, I'm a... I like to float about nice restaurants and, you know, do nice things. I'm not, I'm not sitting anywhere for any amount of time and I'm not dying anytime soon yeah. so I grew up in an era, in an era of everyone saying let's get rich or die trying I ain't trying to die anywhere I'm trying to get my money and get out of, out of here yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say Joe? I ain't, I'm not trying to swim so there's a I've always looked at myself if I was an animal I'd be an eagle do you know why? Cool. I'll tell you why what do eagles do? fly high but where? Who with? Alone. And do you know what that means? Your leader. I grew up with a lot of followers. They'll see that guy, I'll be like him. 
I want to be like them. But what do you want to do? Yeah? So the point I'm making is from young, I knew where I wanted to be, what I want to do, and that's my focus, tunnel vision. It's a rare breed. There isn't many eagles flying about. But there's a lot, everyone's on the floor, they want to take, 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 and, you know, they come across as a entitlement. That was a powerful word. Difficult when you grow amongst people, then you be the eagle, you fly about on your own and find your own way, but they're still doing what they're doing. But because you're there doing that and they see that, they feel entitled. So how I felt, we, go on. So how do we keep them hungry? <sighs> I believe everyone needs a vision. Everyone needs to know what they're doing. I think there's a lot of lost people in the world. Um, they look to Instagram. They're like, well, I want that. Okay, cool. How you can you get there? Don't know. Well, you can't want that without knowing. Everything you do in life, there's a structured plan. There's a roadmap. There's a vision board. Yeah? There's every quarter, every six months, every year, every five years, every 10. Where do you fall in line with that? If you ask them, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You can't look on Instagram and say, I want a G-Wagon. How are you going to get G-Wagon? How many deals do you have to do to get that? Legal. <clears throat> Facts. Facts. I love that. I love that. We spoke a little bit about teamwork. And mm. obviously, you're a very driven person. Yeah. You're that eagle in the sky. Like, you're leading. How do you get your team to believe in your vision and work as hard as you are or cl clearing that path in terms of every time you see something being done on any of your productions or businesses that you see, right, I'm getting value here. My team are believing in what I'm doing. Uh, I give quite a lot of people chances, but I handpick selectively. If I chose every person that won an opportunity with me, you know, I'll just be forever just doing that and not focusing on, on my journey. Um, I believe everyone's got something in them which is a passion that they believe that they can do and what they want to achieve. Um, but what I don't believe in is just continually giving to people that don't appreciate your value. Your value in time is the most expensive thing. Ask anybody, any entrepreneur, they'll tell you. Value in time is the most expensive thing that you can't buy. Apart from that, you can buy, anything, you can buy anything you want. Yes, yes, yes. Well... I'm a little bit tired of teasing now. I want to really go back. Yeah. I want to go into your journey now. Yeah. I want to find out more about it. Um, you know, we've told the audience that you started from humble beginnings and I know, how, you know, you've started a, a business at a very young age also. Yeah. So where did you grow up? So I grew up just outside of London, outside of North London. Uh, I grew up with an, um, an Italian family. The first part of my life, I was growing up, I was growing up with my nana. In English, it means grandma. Um, my mum's full Italian and my dad was a wrestler. So obviously there's a complete mix there. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. I'm here today and I'm very blessed. Um, so I grew up in an affluent area. Um, we didn't really have much growing up at all. The mills weren't particularly great. Even though my mum had, you know, two, three jobs trying to pay the bills, still didn't pay the bills. And obviously back then it was, uh, uh, it's not like now where you've got access to the internet and so on and so on. So, you know, cleaning jobs, cooking, sh chef and this and that. Those kind of jobs that they had was okay back then, but even then they wasn't paying great at that particular time. Um, school was a very vague thing for me. Um, I got expelled from quite a lot of schools just because they said I had a, um, a big character and I had influence on people. Um, for me, it wasn't really influence. I was just intrigued to, well, I'm listening to one person in the room when they're not really where I see I should be. And my mind was another thing because obviously I had things going on. Dad in out of prison, mum working jobs, can't pay the bills. So my mind's not really on GCSEs or how well I can fill out a book or sit in a classroom, listen for an hour, but not be teaching me anything. Mm. For me, I need to know back then exactly, I need to go from A to B. And I'm in A, and you're not showing me B. And it's going on and on. I'm getting bored. I'm getting frustrated. I need to know information so I can elevate my family to put them in a better position to where they are today. That wasn't happening. Then there was frustrating. Then we got to start getting into trouble. All the rest of it. Um, expelled from several schools. Um, How many schools? Uh, five and a bit. Five and a bit. Yeah. Do you think that? First year. 
did do you think that affected you in terms of building relationship with 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 people? Not really, no, because I always I was I was a networker from young, and I knew I'd speak to older people because my lifestyle was a bit crazy growing up. So, you know, eleven and twelve, speaking to people that are like twenty five, thirty five, seeing where they are and seeing where they are in life, what they're doing, how they got there, some good, some bad. But either way, you still learn from either either, either or. Um, and how adaptable was you when you was talking to people your own peer group? Listen, I've been a hustler from young. I, I can walk. I can walk into a board boardroom, corporate, street, music, TV, anything you want me to do. I do. I can walk in and, and adapt because that's something that I've, I've had to teach myself. A lot of people don't have that anymore. They can't even look at you straight in your eyes. Yeah, they're like. Um, They'll send you a bloody good email that you think, yeah. oh, that sounds good, and you meet them, and they won't. They'll, they've lost that social ability, them, them social skills. Do you know what it is? They're, they're, they're too distracted by social media. They'll see somebody and then try and think, do you know what? Let me just send an email and say X, Y, Z. I have no, no background, no nothing, and assume because of their how they that it looks for them that you're going to just take them. I don't ever do that. I need to meet the people eye to eye. Any business I do, I meet them. I'll speak on the phone, I'll see him eye to eye, and then I'll judge it from there. Then if I feel I can do business, I will. If not, I'll just say, no, thank you. That's mm. it. But I, I find there's some sort of awkwardness with, with, the, with the, the newer generation, a lot of them, you know, when you... I think it's patience. Content. Instagram and social media, TikTok, if, if you look on your phone, what's the average time that you scroll? Three seconds, five seconds, scroll. So can you imagine what their mind's thinking? The patients isn't there. They want it now. They look at the Kim Kardashian and think, gee, wagon, nice kid. I want this and that. Then I'll go to maybe, I don't know. It could be a cheering. I think he's doing fantastic. But it's just, everyone needs to grow and you have to walk the walk. There's no fast route to success and there's no fast route to failure. I've failed many times before now. Many times I've invested in business, they've gone, they've gone wrong. I've, I've, I've gone around the wrong people thinking they're the people, they're not. These are all things that you have to do. No one sees your losses. They only see the gains. Mm. So there's, there has to be a, a medium, but there's not. Because social media doesn't show the failures. You hear people speaking about failures, those who are, are successful and can openly say it. For someone who's just on the gram or on social media, put, you know, having that appearance of doing well, they're not going to say that. Because it might it might hinder hinder what they're trying to do. So you know all of these celebrities out there. Do you think yeah. they've been good role models in terms of teaching kids this is not easy? It wasn't all done in a day. And some some use their platform in a good way, and I respect that. Others try and seek attention. So there's a, there's a, a difference between helping, showing, and improving, growing, building. Then you've got look at me. Negative, 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 thinking that that's the way forward to grow your business. But when they put on weight or lose that look, we can do that. See you later. <laughs> that's it. So it's it's a it's a thin line. Listen, as I say, I'm not perfect, but there's a thin line between anything you do in life, whether it's modeling, property, acting, sports, guys. Everyone has their own little thing, but you have to know that there there is. You have to take the roadmap. You can't just go there. Mm. I like that. So you're in school now. You're getting expelled. Yeah. Where does the click moment happen in terms of that you've settled somewhere and you want to get on with it? The click moment for me is always, it's, it's always happened. From, you know, eight, nine, I've had control of myself and I know that where where I am from, from that. Um, and I think because I knew my vision and my goal and I was so anal about things and how I was because it, I'm half Italian, so we're very passionate people. Yeah? So I was very passionate about what, what I wanted to do, and I've always said from young where I want to be, and everyone looked at me like I was strange, or I was an outcast, or he's just talking. The same people now are DMing me and want help. I'll never say no, it's fine, you know, but self believes everything. You have to believe in yourself before other people believe in you. And I knew from young about what I wanted to do. And hence why, even when these, these things happen at school, I got expelled and suspended how many times and your homework's late. I'm not bothered about all that because you're not showing me how to get the bag. Yeah? My, my family needs feeding. So me waiting a year, two years, five years in school 
for me, my whole family could have gone under by then. Mm. So that puts me in a position. Do you think you've always thought like an entrepreneur? Uh, <clears throat> or did you think like an employee, I want to get a good job? I've never had a job in my life. I've never worked for anybody. In fact, I'm telling a lie, I had a... Um, I think you call it like a, a project day from school. I was in a sports shop and actually I got told to leave from, from there. But I've never had a job in my life. What did you do? I tried taking some trainers because at that time I couldn't afford them. Mm. Emotional. Mm. So what was it sort of like growing up in terms of your mum's doing a couple of jobs? There was you and your brother. Yeah, I mean, I'm not putting down my mum or any parent. Of course. But, you know, as a young man growing up in an affluent area, you see things. You're, you're, you're exposed more. And I think it's like they say, the more travelled you are, the more worldly you are. The more knowledge you have, the more knowledgeable you are. So I just knew a lot of stuff and I saw a lot of stuff. And I was exposed to things early. So I had to, in my head, I'm thinking, how can I get from A to B? And the A to B is not quick as people think. It sounds easy. It's not. There's a long road. There's a lot of ups, downs, losses, wins, losses, wins, death. There's loads of things that happen. So it, it's just keeping that tunnel vision, knowing that one day I'm going to make that happen. And sometimes you just got to cut people off. I've got friends I, I just don't talk to no more because they're just great to be around. You try and help them out. They come around you and they just bring negative Energy is your vision. And, I, and I'm a guy, I believe in energies. Everyone's energy has got to be on the same kind of thing and where we're going because any energy that knocks me off of that is a distraction and then you can spend too much time on the distraction and then your wins become losses. 100%. I definitely think like it's very important to look at your environment, you yeah. know, because if that's where you're growing, then you're going to be like, you know, you're going to be having them same sort of conversations. Yeah. If you're talking about, you know, football and you're on that table all you're going to be talking is about football right yeah, and you're yeah, trying yeah. to conversate with the put where is that football getting you yeah, yeah there's 11 men running around the pitch they're all multi-millionaires yeah. and you're wasting your time spending it on beer yeah yeah, yeah. i mean so I, I agree with you I, I definitely believe in that but i also believe like environment is more than just the people that you're around definitely it's, it's also how are you waking up mm. are you doing your bed how clean is your room is your desk have you got your pencils i've got OC i'm i'm ocd my missus will tell you, I don't like anything out of place. Mm. Uh, my, my home, it's not like a hotel, but it's semi years. It's minimal. There's no mess. I don't have it because it disturbed my my thought process and things like that. I like to go sleep quite early because my days start at four o'clock in the morning, sometimes five, sometimes five. Uh, I'm done in by about three, four o'clock. Then you've got your family life then. Yep. School runs, yep. nursery runs. Yeah those kind of headaches to go on in the background, business. I like to switch off. And I think, you know, training for me is important. Mm -hmm. Hour of a day, just on your own focus train. It helps me think more and just be a bit more proactive as well. What does training mean for you? The world. I have to train daily, literally. I'll go for a run or I'll go tie boxing or I'll, I'll say gym, but it's more fast paced, intense sort of training. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And more about your diet. About what? Your diet. My diet, major important. Major important. I eat clean. You very look, clean. You look very good, by the way. Very, the, very good. I'm trying to... Uh, so I'm going to... It's a bit weird. I'm on a monk's diet at the minute. Okay. I'll, I'll, Tell us more. I'll explain what a monk's diet is. So you eat once a day, okay? And you're going for a, a process throughout that day. And it's almost like discipline. Imagine having one meal a day. You wake up, no breakfast. So you have waters and coffees, cool, or tea or green tea. Whatever you have drinking-wise is fine. No protein shake or, you know, just drinks. But then you, you're not having snacks, biscuits, crisps. I'll just have that. So that's discipline in itself. And then come when you have your meal, you've got your fish, your chicken, your steamed yeah. veg, your potatoes, no grease, no sauce. My, my plate is like a white plate with bits of colours on it. If I do everyone's head in. Everyone can have what they want, but my plate, I have my plate a certain way. I like to be disciplined where I train at and I eat clean. I use beauty products. Um, and yeah. So it, you it use works some me. beauty products such as? Just uh, face creams, body creams, but good ones. 
that help your skin glow. Um, I'm in the public eye as well, so obviously I'm quite conscious of 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 how I eat. Look, well, dieting is a big thing to your skin. It can it can go dry. But listen, I'm not a beauty specialist, but obviously I've got a bit of that background in me, so I make sure that I apply myself accordingly. Some people say, "Oh, you're vain," or you know, you love yourself too much. No, no, no. All of that. I, stuff. I don't think it's even about about. I believe in loving yourself because if you don't love you, who's loving you? Fact. If you don't love yourself, how's anyone going to love you if you don't value yourself? Vain. I don't think I'm vain. I just think that I that I look after myself. Well, because I've seen people that are the same age as me or a bit younger, a bit older, and it's just completely different. But everyone's got their own back to the same path. Everyone's got their own path. Everyone believes in their own dream, their own vision. I believe in me and I believe in longevity in business, my health, my wealth, my family. If I'm un if I'm if if I've got bad habits eating, bad habits drinking and drugs, I've never done drugs by the way, but th if you've got those things, do you think you're gonna live long? How are you gonna feed your family? You're not. So it's not a boring life, but I'm very sort of I've got my own thing going on with myself that works for me. And everyone's got their own thing that works for them. So some people might just say, oh, but you're too anal on this. You have to have... I have loads of fun. Don't get twisted. VIP parties, red carpets, the works. But I control myself. 100. Um, I can totally resonate and agree with you there because mm. I think simplicity is key sometimes. It, is. it doesn't matter if you're in the limelight or if you're doing big businesses you got to stay rooted and say, who am I? You know, um, if I want to eat simple, then that's what works for me because I know where I want to get to. You know, I want to look after myself. I'm earning money. I'm in the public. I, I want to enjoy my money one day. I don't want to be 50 and then be having a heart attack because I've been eating too much and, you know, every sort of event and party and abusing myself. Yeah. Because how many celebrities do we see who do that as well? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an outrage, really. I mean, I've lost a few friends through COVID. Um, obviously they was doing stuff stuff that shouldn't be then they went to the hospitals and then they passed away that was another an eye opener for me as well because these people speak to every day and then they just disappear mm. but then you, you have to there's a thin line between having fun and just having a balance in life and I think mm. it's about routine I think every person needs a routine in their life if you don't have a routine for me personally I can't speak to everybody, but most people that have routines are quite successful. Yeah. Uh, their surroundings are quite similar. And, um, you know, I keep my circle small. I don't even, I don't really need to go outside my circle. I don't need to. I can have everything I want through one hand. Of you know, I've got a close network and between that close network, I can access anything I want. How was life during COVID for you? COVID for me actually slowed me down. And it, it, it opened up doors to e the world of e-commerce and working at, a, I think for me, it helped me to uh, think outside the box and just think, right, okay, so what I'm doing now is, is okay, but now I can't go there or I can't be there or do that or have that meeting, how are we going to do this? You can have Zoom all you want, but if you've not got a product or a business that you can do online or not having to be physical, you, you'll survive anywhere in the world. Yeah. So did you come up with any products during that time? In terms yeah, of yeah, yeah. So we've got um, a new product line, the, uh, vodka. I've got vapes as well, um, clothing line. And uh, I've done a few things as well, like in building terms of property with e-commerce. I've, I've got other business partners where we sell, sell sell materials online. So obviously when there's COVID, most property developers couldn't get building products. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, cool. Let's get them, let's, let's do it online. So you can order it online. So the guys have to get in the van, pick the stuff up, drive to your land, build your house, do what you're doing. We can just send it to you. Nice. Daniel, what, what was your first experience of business in terms of one of your first side hustles? Okay, so <clears throat> I was forced into cutting my own hair from young because obviously I was, I was half Italian mixed race uh, where I grew up there wasn't many of us around so was that just giving yourself a number one or no like that? way back then I had jerry curls it was all like very Italiano it was all nice <laughs> believe it or not um, and uh, 
there was a lot of shops I went to to get a style they couldn't do it and they said oh, oh we can't cut your type of hair mm-hmm. then I had to go deeper into London around the ghetto to get a little trim and then I was thinking nah this is headache for me let me just learn to do it myself um, and then I had a paper round from young eight nine sorry eight nine nine ten I had a paper round weren't allowed a paper round but I had it anyway because mm-hmm. I knew the woman that owned the shop she was a personal family friend she go look I'll give you a trial so before you know, I was up I do did paper did you deliver round. them papers? all of them and that is where I actually met some interesting people. Okay. Very interesting. When you go to the house and, and they've got a nice car and drive, I'm knocking your door. How'd you get that? Okay. Straight. So you wasn't try. Nah, just straight there. And then like, how'd you get that? Tell me how you got it. They're like, okay. You're a kid. Why do you know I bought a car? No, I'm interested. Because mm. you're the only person in this close driving that car. Did you ever get any um, bad responses like nothing to of you? Never. Because I've, all, I've, I've always known how to speak and deliver myself, mm, so even from young. How do you so be likable? How do you, you know, charm somebody? I wouldn't say charm. It's just about being, just about being yourself and just, just being confident. And I think I always had that in, in my mind, you know, that A to B, get me out of where I am now. So I was always looking at things and just asking questions, being inquisitive. I had my vision for where would it mean my family, and uh, some people already had it. So it was just natural for me to say, how'd you get it? See, look, there's some people in the audience right now watching and saying, I'm not confident like you, Daniel. Like, I might say it and I'm scared of failure because yeah. if somebody says, no, it hurts my confidence and then I might not get out of my house again or yeah. I might not try again. Because Let me tell you now, you will fail before you win. There's no entrepreneur, millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire that will tell you he's never, ever failed, but he's gone from A to Z and nothing's gone wrong. You have ups and downs, but it's how you deal with ups and downs. But when you come from uh, a background where you're already fighting day to day to pay bills and the basics, you're already winning just getting through that. Not everyone has that. Some people have a great, fantastic life. Their mum and dad's got money. They've helped them out. And they, they don't see that. But what happens with that is, fast forward five years, you could have five million in the bank, lose it all, you could turn to drugs, alcohol. There's things that can go wrong, but they're not shown that because they're, they're kept in that survival thing from their parents. Mm. But the parents might let them go outside of the comfort zone because that's when things are real. But when the parents ain't about and they've got the money and they mix with a mix, that's a very important thing. When people mix of different worlds a lot of things come out emotions people drink they talk they open up all of a sudden you're in a deep conversation then you're hearing someone else of what someone else has said and someone else said you take it in he's like wow it hits you for six some people it's like some people with money want to be famous why why would you want to be famous when you're already set in life for what there's no point in that but they do because they want the attention yes. but then flip the people that haven't got the money want the wealth and become famous. But some want the money for freedom. And I believe in the freedom bit because that's all money does. It gives you freedom. It doesn't buy you happiness. I'll give you 10 million pounds now. Bang, there you go. Take that. Are you more happy? You might think you are. But the same demons and the same things you've, you're fighting against your whole entire life will not go until you deal with it one by one by one by one. And that's something that I've learned. And that's my advice to everyone is to, you need to Know who you are, focus on yourself, deal with anything that's in like any niggles that are in the background before you step forward. Because otherwise you can become a millionaire overnight. Mm. You can have a an online brand and just absolutely blow, but you're not dealt with the demons. And guess what happened to demons? It catches you and they don't let go, don't let go, then you lose it, then you now you're in trouble. Or you're giving it from wealth. And somewhere down the line, something will happen. It will, because life tests you in different ways. Mm. I can give you all the all the money in the world. And you can phone me next week and say, Dan, it's gone wrong. Which means it's gone wrong. I gave you everything. But it's not. A lot of people just want basics, which is happiness. But you need a channel of freedom. And freedom, unfortunately, is money in any country. And that's it. They say we're we're always children, you know, like we we're, we're always our inner definitely child. Are. Definitely. Everything we think about now is we go to a thought process for how we dealt with it before. Mm. And a lot of how our mind is set is from mm. your childhood experiences. Yeah, definitely. 
but sometimes maybe even you creating a lot of businesses, two, three products in front of me, acting, I don't know, are you running away from that child who was growing up in poverty and never want to see that? I'll be honest with you, I never had a child, did. I went from being a man at, from age eight, nine years old, and then I was told at 14 I'm having a kid, so I didn't really get to play in the playground. I played football, I was good. I got picked for England for basketball. I was great. My first question was wages. I've not got time to play basketball. I've not got time to have six weeks on boot camp. If you're not paying me the wages or getting my family out where I need to be, that time there is, you're not paying for my time. I can't do that. So I lost out on a lot of things that were opportunities. And then I had a kid from young. Was that the right attitude? Am I getting paid right now for this? Uh, was that the right decision? At the time, I thought it was. If I would have stuck to what was really supposed to go on, I'd probably be... I, would, I could have been a footballer. I'm, I don't know about the basketball bit because I'm a bit too short. I'm, whenever I go out, I'm the shortest man in the room. But that doesn't stop me from still trying to tap the board. <laughs> Listen, I should shut it down in basketball, but <laughs> it is what it is, man. Um, so obviously, being told I'm having a kid at that age, and then having my first business when I was 16. How did that come about? I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not saying how did you yeah, make a kid, yeah. but like, how did you get involved in that? Like, so you got this, is, so you said you've had a paper round, like, and and yeah. what did you spend that money on? I was trying to save it. Tried to, and then, you know, I bought some clippers, I started cutting hair, doing friends and family, then I a full house, then my mum was moaning all the time. And then uh, I had a shop from, from a teenager. I had the first shop, then I had several more shops. Then I got into other things because you start. How did that all come about, though? How did you put them deals together? <laughs> so basically, I'll just, at the time, you know, I'll just walk past shops and just say, Are you renting a shop? Nine times out of ten, it was like, You're okay. too young. But then I met someone through someone who's in my family and it opened the door. How so, old was you at this stage? Uh, about 15, 16. And how did, like, um, you know, you found out you was going to be a father? She was a young girl as well? Yeah, yeah. And how did that affect things? Interesting question. Uh, I just dealt with it. Dealt with it. Had the baby. Turned up at my mum's house with a baby. There's no question or anything. Because I was quite wild as a child. But just turned up with a baby and said, yeah, this is your grandson. She was cool. I was cool. just cracked on. There wasn't wow. no sort of like and no one really told me anything because I was a boss from young so it was like what I do kind of goes sort of thing but obviously back like now I look back and think wow no one even said are you alright you know how do you feel or even now this is probably this is why that question kind of thrown me off I don't really get asked questions like that are you alright I just get thrown things at me and I deal with it because I turn them I, some people get negatives uh, and it just completely throws them off and they go off to off the rails I get thrown negative and I have to deal with it I've got no choice I can even lie on me I've got no one to help me no mum no dad friends family no one just me so I can only rely on me so I deal with everything accordingly how I think it should be so I've had no guidance or rules or anything I've just gone through life and just tried to protect myself at all times you think that's healthy? Not really, no. I think it's, it's good to talk to people and uh, now, now I look back, I think maybe some of that's uh, created how I am as a person but I believe I'm, I'm getting better. Um, the girl I'm with now, uh, she's got a massive family and that's something I never had. So I often get quite, uh, not overwhelmed but obviously not having that around you in your life and just been you Listen, I know everybody. I know I've got a big network of people, but they've all got families. So when they all go home, they've got their mum, dad, their this, that. It's just me. I could be in a penthouse suite, I could be chilling, but it's just me waking up. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've failed a few times in relationships, and I think it's because some of the times I've, I've not passing the, the buck or the blame, but I think the way you grow up in life is quite important. It affects you later on in life and how you see things and people. So trust is a major issue for me. Obviously, my mum weren't really about, dad's not about, then who do I trust? So, relying on yourself is quite deep. 
You know, when you've got to make a decision, you've really got to make that decision. You either sink or swim. So I've had it from young, so that's why I'm fearless. Fearless is something that a lot of people don't have. If I told you now, you got no mum and dad, but I've got this opportunity because you want yes or no. You got no guidance around you. Cause I had no guidance around me. Because also, you know, 14, 15, I was going like I was like 25, 30. Because I was surrounding myself with people that were older to try and get knowledge as well. But then I was slowly starting to realise there's a pattern with some people that weren't for me and how to, you know, meet a few people through the businesses that I had at that particular time, I think helped me to grow as well. Do you know what I mean? How did you cope with all the responsibility that came with the business? So you're, you're did you say 15, 16? Yeah, yeah. And you've asked somebody for some shop keys. Yeah. You've got rent to pay, probably a, a renovation. I just, I just dealt with it, you know, because I've always been a hustler from young and like, my mindset was, if you've got an opportunity, you've got to take that. What if, is, if you think it's right for you. What does dealt with it mean? Meaning, so, I just have to, if someone says to me now, nah, you've got, okay, let's say arguments say, you've got to pay a £1,000 next week. I have to work it out. How am I going to do that? And make that happen. So you have to go through your network and think about what, what smart moves can I actually make to make this actually work? But I'm not afraid to say, yeah, I'll have it next week. You've got to find, you've got to find a way. And because I've always found my way from young, it's, it's like throwing me in a, in a, in a, in a forest in pitch black and say, I, I'll just, I'll see you soon. I'll be out before you think, before you think. And I'll be, and I'll be shocking you. Cause that's just always been me from young. So that's embedded in me to find my own way, find my own path and rely on me and my own instincts. Instincts is very important. And that's why I go back, back to the energy thing. If some energy's off or I sense something's going on, I'll just turn around. I've not got time for headaches. And that's something that as you get older, you just think, Do you know what? I don't want headache money or headache business rather than the habit. I've, I've turned down the lucrative deals many times because the people behind the business, I just think, I, I don't want to work if you're nothing to be more headache than it's worth. Mm. I don't want to chase you for payments every month because if I owe someone a pound, they're on me differently. Like They're on me. I don't want my money. All right, cool, there you go. Boom. So I always pay on people first. But so that's an old school behaviour. Now is, you know, everyone's got WhatsApp and hide behind a phone, don't answer the phones and this and that and complications happens. Now I try and build an infrastructure that where that doesn't happen to protect me. Because then otherwise I'm on the front line again. I'm the one chilling out, making sure everyone's cool. But as an entrepreneur, sometimes you've got to do that. You've got to pay everyone first before you get paid. Sometimes I paid, I've, I've done my business, I'm the last person to get paid. Because mm -hmm. everyone's chasing down and this and that. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll sort you out. But when it's time for me to get paid, I've, there's, a, there's always a delay. But guess what I never do? I never moan. I'm like, cool. Because in my head, from young, from nine, eight, my money's coming. The big bananas is coming. Mm -hmm. 100 grand, 200 grand, a million. Don't phase me. I'm not. That doesn't make me feel excited. I need lifetime money to look after my family, their family, their family, and make sure that everyone's, I can pass down the knowledge that I've had to go through by myself that most people pay thousands for knowledge for, I can pass that down. And that's more valuable than money. But you've got to do smart moves. Work smarter, not harder. It's like you're changing the path. Have to. Life, you have to keep reinventing yourself. You can't do the same thing. Imagine you're still doing podcasts in 15 years. She wasted 15 years. How are you ever going to grow? That ceiling's there. We can see that ceiling, yeah? <laughs> have a look. You can see it there. Right, so would, you, would we not think about, right, we need to make a second floor. But then it don't stop at the second floor, does it? Because if you go to Dubai, you've got the, the Burj Khalifa, how high is that? And they're still trying to build on it. So I believe it's the same thing when you're in business, relationship, friendship. You always want to, me personally, you have to keep pushing. And I always encourage people, you need to push beyond what you think you can achieve to achieve what you really want to achieve. When is it all enough? <sighs> uh, I think there's a, a thin line between happiness and just making sure that your family that you that not just your family but what you're creating uh, it continues and you can kind of oversee it. I think as you get older you just kind of take more of a back seat you set it up and you 
teach people how to do things and you just go on and on and on so you can slowly ease away but you you always have one hand in it's just, it just to be up I've been working from a young age but I love what I do I don't think I could ever switch off I just love it I like a challenge I like finding problems to make the problems a success and then it goes on and on and on and then you start giving back to people it's like yourself uh, you can start helping people help people by knowledge it's like you're telling your mind what to do. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger says that yeah. I'm, I'm 70 X plus. Yeah. But I'm not that age. That's not my age. I'm younger. Yeah. I'm going to train. Don't tell me not to train because the minute I don't have a purpose to do something is the yeah. day I actually die, but I'm still living. So let me do my thing. Yeah. Everybody like just thinks, oh, when am I going to retire? 55, I, think, 60. I think a lot of people are programmed from young to have a programmed life. And we're, all, we're, we're all designed to be programmed. How do we deprogram that? selective individuals and I just think it's it's about how you grow up what you see what you don't see who you surround your surroundings everything okay I've grown up with high tech trainers yeah. yeah sharing my dad's clothes yeah working in a corner shop getting bullied broken noses you know whatever's gone on in East London yeah, yeah. I've got that driving me yeah I can make it and I didn't make it you know got to 10 million pounds my kids are now waking up and they're waking up in a three million house. Nice little silk roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you instill that in that person? I just think it's about discipline. Everything's about discipline. It's like being a boxer. If you don't train, you don't win. It's, it's in life. If you don't work, there's no money. How do you discipline that, that them children? Like not being cruel, to be kind sort of thing, but still give them challenges and tasks. What there's some challenges say? in life, whether you've got money or not. You, I know some guys that are, you know, the tenth and eleventh richest in the, in the country. They still go through tribulations. They still have problems with their family. Nothing doesn't change. And this is the point I'm saying: money doesn't take away your problems. If if you if your health is bad, what happens? You die. If you've got no money, what happens? You lose. If you don't have happiness, you're sad. So when does it end? When does it end? You just got to find that music yourself. And I think sometimes for you to try and teach somebody, okay, we've got all this money, great. We've got a big mansion, great. Somewhere down the line, they're going to have a problem that you can't solve and money can't buy. Death, prison, sickness. Can't stop it. So tell us, Daniel, about, you know, setting up your first business. Yeah. What, what did that sort of look like? Yeah, so well, one of my first business was just like a little shed. You can buy a shed from B and Q, but I had a shed uh, on a on a high street. Literally, it was a shop, but I call it a shed because it was really small. You could fit maybe one chair in there max. I know mine was packed. Had queues going down the road, and how did you make that happen? <clears throat> Just through reputation again. You know, I, I, I've been grinding from young, so I, I knew everyone in the area. And again, I was quite full for my age. I knew all the successful businessmen. I've just for some reason I'm attracted to that. And I built that network up from young. And then I started doing footballers um, from Stevenage, Watford, That's Premier League. How would you network with them people? Reputation goes a long way. Your, your craft speaks for itself. Mm. So you attract that. It's not just attracting. Yeah. Because you're a certain type of person. Yeah. So what do you think your trait is to make you like, it seems like you're a little bit naughty, but there was something very likable about you at the same time. <laughs> Listen, I was naughty back in the day. Like now, now it's just like, I'm not even trying to think about all that. Cause I've not, the, some of my best mates, are, uh, they're, they're, um, they've either passed away. Um, they get in jail for like 16 years, 18 years for doing crime to try and feed the families and for me it's, it's just weren't for me what was like a war about you was you telling me, jokes uh, no, was, you, just, was, you, was you, do you know what me, people it, it, was you complimenting people it's just I could just mix in any circle and I, I'll just, I'm just a cool guy I'm not one of these guys to go like if I'm in a wine bar or a club I don't pull my heart and say oh I've had a hard life and I just I've just learned to just it's just again deal with it and I think sometimes if you just deal with things accordingly and not bring too much negative into what you're doing. You get actually more respect for that than when you actually find out. Like this is probably the second podcast I've ever done in my life. Ever, ever, ever. We're blessed. <laughs> and I, I turned down podcasts because I don't feel like speaking to every, every single person about everything is the right thing to do. And I think 
you know, sometime less is more. You with me? We I don't think we have any connection anyway whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. But I think I came through, you know, Terry yeah, yeah. Uh, Stone's connections and I and I yeah. saw you on some of the posts. And I looked through it and I was like, I like this person. Like yeah. you, you look kind of cool, yeah, yeah. trendy, like and that's why I reached out to you. Nice, what, man. what what made you say yes? Do you know what it is as well? It's it's circle. So if you if, if you're it's like validation. It's like the old school Godfather film. If someone validates you, then you think, you know what? I'll, I'll give him a little shout out there. And, and, and again, it's about support because you're a young guy doing well as well. So it's, it's, again, it's about networking. So it's, it's great to see someone else networking. I love praising people that do well. I'll, I'll be the first one to say, yo, them shoes are sick. That watch is nice. Your business is smashing it. Keep going. Love that, bro. Yeah. But people aren't like that. People are so quick to tear your tree down. Oh, 100%. Listen, I've got that. I get DM sometimes. I, I just laugh. You think this and that. I can't wait for you to fucking fail. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I don't respond to it. It doesn't even bother me because you know some people that you see in the mail like all the time, like you know, people going under and trying to commit suicide over comments. You gotta remember, social media is a platform. It's an open platform. So if you choose to go on that platform and someone says a comment, I mean, <clears throat> Instagram's made it now where you can switch comments off. I just turn one off now. And then, unless I actually follow you or I'm, you know, there's some engagement. I don't get, I can't bother with the whole rule of nonsense stuff, but I think it's about being thick skinned as well. And it goes back to dealing with it, but sometimes it is, I think it is about childhood as well. If you're a tough person, you don't really get phased by someone saying you're this, you're that. Because nine times out of them, nine times out of ten, those people want to be you, jealous of you, envy of you, would love you to work with them. And help them. And that's it. Mm. Facts, man. I like that. I like that a lot. Because people just feel uncomfortable, you know. And they just can't handle your success. So they just lash out at you. That word uncomfortable. I never get comfortable. Ever. So you said 10 million, yeah? If you get comfortable with the 10 million, you'll, you'll, you'll end up losing someone down the line. You've got to be switched on like a light bulb. you got on, off, on, off. You have to be... When you get, sorry, uncomfortable is maybe the wrong word, complacent. Mm. It's easy. You can go from corner shop, like you said, to 10 million, get comfortable. You'll chill for a year or two. But you see the same guy that was coming up behind you that looked up to you. You see the two years you chilled, you surpassed you now. Mm. And guess where he is? He's on 50 mil now. How, how do you feel about that? That's the world we're living in now. Mm. At the touch of a button, it can happen. I think so, you gotta know you gotta know how consent you are as also yeah. your priorities list change all the time. Hundred percent. You know, where when I was growing up it was just about money and job roles and yeah. saving money and buying that house. And I'll be honest with you, it might be a little bit sad, but like family didn't come that high because it was like I'm grafting yeah. for a better life. Yeah. Now family comes number one now because it's like I want to be present. Do you know what I mean? I can't buy this time back. Family for me is like what you what you create. Because family can hold you back as well. Mm. You can be the breadwinner of the family next thing you're just shelling out all the bills, all the bills and mm. the expectations and the entitlement kicks in. But you have to know when to draw the line. You can't just be making 10 million to handle all the way. Because mm. I'm telling you now, if you fell on your feet, no one's going to replace the 10 million, but they'll be happy to take it. But your immediate wife, your kids, your immediate, 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 for me, that's what's important to me. Because I've had situations where family has, has fucked me over, mm. done me over. You think they're cool because it's your stepdad or whoever it is and it turns out to be ex. At the end of the day, you just have to know that your family's okay. For me, that's how I think anyway. Do you know what I mean? And my, it's, it's weird because my missus comes from, she's Irish, yeah? From a massive family. But they're, I don't know if it if it's a culture thing or not, but they're quite a tight unit. Like, my missus will speak to her mum a thousand times a day. I could not speak to her mum for five years. Do you understand? Wow. So it's, yeah, because there's, you know, the things happen and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, it's, everyone's got a different idea of family. Mine's, mine's a bit touch and go because of maybe, because of what I've gone through. But yours might be loving and and you might say, I've made 10 more, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm chilling. No, I, My I, family's nice, we're cool. I'm all right. But then there's another scenario where someone else can say, nah, 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 I need about 200 mil because I've got vultures around me. I need to make sure I'm keep moving. So it, there's a fit, again, there's a, always a fit line, the good and the bad. Mm, 
I like that. I like that. Yeah, I agree. Like your immediate family is something that you can something control. Like yeah. you can control that and yeah. change the narrative. Mm-hmm. But you know, not everybody who you grew up in the same nest with, you know, is going to be with you all the way. Ah, oh, hundred percent. But it's it's it's, it's weird because when you do start making it, them same ones that weren't around, they're flying in DMs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, one hundred, one hundred. What was your relationship like with your childhood? So, you know, you had one at 14. And you yeah, started. so, I mean, it's a bit sticky for me because obviously, you know, young businesses, money. So, I'll say I was more of like a financial dad to start with. No, I'm full on hands on dad. I'm doing things I've never done before because I know things I didn't know then. Yeah. I'm experiencing what love really is, what family really is. Mm. So, we can start again start seeing you think you know i might be thinking a bit too harsh here let me just ease off or whatever so it's just like i'm I'm more i'll say a bit more hands-on now mm-hmm. whereas back then i was more all right i've got businesses i'll just put some money aside and make sure everyone's cool would but, you say you was more a dad rather than a father back then yeah no i'll do anything with my kids because i appreciate it but you have to grow and learn remember not having wings either side telling you what's going on. Mum and dad trying to help. Your family ain't trying to guide you, it's just you. I had to learn how I went on. So what I thought was right was probably wrong. What do you think? But about, it could have been right. What do you think about having kids at a young age? No. I wouldn't advise it for anybody. It's a... It's, uh, it's difficult because it... it uh, it's difficult. It's a blessing and a curse. It, it depends what person you are. If you're trying to reach the stars and obviously when you've got kids, you're thinking about babysitters and there's a whole heap of stuff that doesn't, no one tells you when you, you're going through that pain at the start. Then you learn that when some families say, yeah, I'm there for you. Congratulations. And then a year later you say, listen, I need a babysitter. Like, oh, I'm not doing that. Because mm. no one cares then. But they enjoy the, the moment at the time. But, uh, yeah, I think... I think we're in a different time now. We're a lot more advanced mm-hmm. in terms of access to the internet, access to your your goals, your dreams, and things you want to do. Because when you've not had the access to it, then it's different. You, you, I can't just go online now and say, well, I want that. And now every, every touch of a button, literally. Mm-hmm. Yes, we were in a different era. <laughs> I remember calling up Sam on his mum's phone. I was like, yeah, it's Sam Listen, coming Listen, I used to have the pager, yeah. My, phone, my page is the beat. I think, oh. I could walk all the way to the phone box, make the, the two second call, and then walk all the way back. So yeah, big phones, banana phones, slide phones, <laughs> any uh, the the eighty two tens, thirty three, all of that, 10. all of that, man, all of that. Man. Snakes was the best game around. Listen, snakes did is the best game, basic <laughs> but effective. The highest score wins. Simple. Do you know what I mean? And that's the, almost like the roadmap of life. Honestly. Yes, one hundred. So, what did you learn from your first business? Uh, first, first business. So I've learned. So people, that's the haircutting shop. Yeah, yeah. So people skills, networking, uh, learning and growing. Because you you can learn a lot from talking to somebody. Did you leverage your skills? So Major. Did you, did you Major. employ other people then? Yeah. You know, at at some stages, I was like sixteen, seventeen, employing thirty five year olds, which was difficult for them. How but the, I'm the boss. How did you manage that? Dealt with it. <laughs> because when things are thrown at me, I work best. I work, I feel I work best under pressure. How did you know, like, from this money that I'm getting, I've got to pay taxes and stuff now as well? I didn't really know about all that. So I had to learn as I went on. So I made some mistakes. Um, but you learn. You speak to people, you learn. Oh, is it? Then you go back. I better do that. Or I need to do this. Or how do you do You know, now I'll, I'll ask. If, I don't, if, if I'm talking now and you say one word that I don't understand, I'll stop the conversation. What does that mean? But then I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I need to know what you're saying. Word for word. So I fully understand what this conversation is about. Okay. So you've networked and you started cutting a couple of people's yeah. hairs. How did you get to the footballers? Yeah, they started coming to me. Okay. And then um, I started coming to the shop. And from the shop, I was getting pings. I was going to the hotels. Hotels, started going to the houses. How much was you getting paid for that? Uh, probably more than what I would, I would get paid in a month. Okay. Without putting specific figures out there. Yeah. But I just started working out if, if I just done that VIP service, I'd be a lot more ahead. Okay. 
Okay, so, and then you, then you got passed around all the footballers in terms of he cuts here, he'll come yeah, yeah. mobile. And so where did that lead to? Yeah, so I've got flown to every tournament globally. Uh, oh, wow. World Cup, Russia, Euros. Then I started mixing with other football teams in different countries. I was the first to do it as well. That provided this service. So I was manic. I didn't even want a plane, private jet, a car. I spent most of my time traveling. I was oh. really, I wasn't really. How was your feeling? I didn't really feel anything. It's just, it, I, it's just become natural. It was just like, that's what I do. So every every, every day I'd wake up, I could be in a different country, I could, I could be in a different town, but I didn't, I didn't really get experience to see the town. Sounds great when you're on a plane landing in Russia, but when you go straight to a hotel, you're there. Did you get big headed about it? Like coming never. back to the ends and going, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm on a private jet now. Never. Or... Never. What kept but you everyone, grounded? Ev just myself. Again, it's just it's just how you grow. I've not really been one to like glow about things because I'm a strong believer. If you've got it, you got it. You don't need to start acting up. But now, um, there's other guys that are doing what I'm doing and I'm glad because the influence has been there. I've won all the awards. I've done all the shows. I've been at the peak, front page magazine, Sky TV, BBC, ITV, all the interviews. I've met the biggest footballers, the biggest names. I've rubbed shoulders with them. I've got the numbers in my phone personally. No football agents. I know them all. And I'm blessed. I'm grateful. That the next generation now want to do that. And they're still doing it. But it comes a time, even though I loved what I was doing, and there's a lifestyle that goes with that, by the way, as well. So you get wrapped up in lifestyle, but there's a a period where you think, okay, if I'm flying eight hours, then I get in a car, then I do that. But that's a day, two days gone. You've got to start thinking about that because time's going now. So a year, two years, three years. Whatever. Your reputation's building. You're getting dragged from pillar to post. You've got endorsements coming in. You're doing this, you're doing that. But then you've got to wind it down. Why? Because you, you can get wrapped up in just providing services, but then you're not growing. Do you know what I'm trying to say about that? Meaning, if I come here now and see you now and charge you know, £1,000, £2,000, £500, £10, doesn't matter what it is, then I go see someone else. Then I go see someone else. You're missing opportunities here where you could do the same thing money-wise and not do that. So that time you're spending eight hours there, you could make the same doing a lot less by networking, meeting someone else, and they show you a path where you can do something else and you've got more time. So the more time you have, you can execute more stuff without just traveling all the time. So you saw your value coming up. Yeah. But you're not being, you know, compensated for your value because you're like, I know all of this stuff now. Yeah, because if, when you got a, not, I wouldn't say a price list, but Again, the, everything has a ceiling. I don't like ceilings. I want to be limitless. It's, the sky's limit for me. Don't put, a, don't put me in a box. I will get out of that box and I'm, I'm off. Um, and I felt after a while like... People... For me, value is everything. So you can't... If I have to put my true value of my time on a price, they won't, no one's going to like what I say. So you have to think after time, well, I know my value. So I'm not just going to be here as a service. I need to do what I'm doing. I'm extremely grateful for the doors that are opened and what's been built around it. Because I've actually built myself a brand and myself and, you know, everything's great and I'm extremely humble for it. But at the same time, you need to elevate. It's like footballers don't just stay at a champ uh, championship or non-league football, do they? They want to play for Man United. They want to go to Real Madrid. That You know, from £100 a week to like £500,000 a week. So everyone wants to grow. Everyone wants to elevate. So you have to take new paths, new journeys, and just keep growing. But I just felt it, it, sometimes you can just be on a, on a on a like a rat race. We're going round and round and round. But where's the exit? There's no exit. And at the same time, I'm doing this, and you're on the Sky Sports, and you're doing this, you're doing that. It's all buzzing, but then you're missing the key. I used to get asked all the time about film. Dan, you look like this guy. You look like that guy. You'll be great. You look like Vin Diesel. Yeah, yeah. You look like Vin Diesel, Dan. <laughs> so, honestly, I get stopped like, all the time, honestly. Um, but I turn so many things down that could be lucrative and massive. And when you do something that goes viral, like when I, I remember, I, I, remember I, I, I cut Gareth Bell's here, yeah. Trademark, 1.5 million people copied that car. One day. One day. Wow. That was the influence I had. 
on the pitch with. So people come to me one way, and I'm like, listen, let me just do something different. And I would say, they used to call me magic hands. I was just trans, you know, transformation was my thing back then. And, uh, you know, that went viral. 1.5 million people trademarked it. Every shop, barber shop, everyone had that same thing on their price list. That bail cut, bang, 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 bang. Then when Balotelli comes to Man City, the blonde strip, all of that. There's there, honestly there's a big list of people. Rooney, a lot of them. I could do loads. I could say so many names. Um, but I had a great journey. But also, there comes a time you've got to think about yourself. Where do you want to be? You can keep providing services, but where do you want to be then? Where do you want to go in life? And my chapter is the chapter that I choose. What was you doing with your earned income at this time? Um, I tried s- several things. Uh, property, I tried products. I tried a few things to see what was, I thought at the time was okay. Was so, you good with your money or was you ended up spending a lot of that money? Back then, I'll say I was, I was quite reckless. I was quite young. You know, I was living a fast life. and Craziest purchase? Say again? Your craziest purchase? The craziest purchase well in between just just a house or a watch really back then do you know what I mean because I had the links that I could get things and do things and uh, would yeah. you class uh, a watch as an asset no no huh? no I don't even wear my watch I've got watches but I don't even wear them if I'm going out to a wedding or wherever it is some people might buy a Rolex and a you know, and hoping for your time it goes up, they make ten grand. But that's three years, ten grand. Yeah. When you do, when you when you do ten thousand pounds divided by what thirty six months, really, you can earn more getting a, working at McDonald's. It's not, it don't make sense. So, uh, property's great, land's great. Uh, there's a few other things I'm doing that I think is great um, in terms of l- longevity and with digital income. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. I believe now, trying to make money without moving. So you plant the seed, you do all the work. You have to hit the ground running, do the work. Once you're down, it's like growing a plant. You have to dig, plant, plant it, water it, water it. All of a sudden, what happens? It starts growing. It blossoms. Yeah. And 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 that's where it's at. But it's taken time to get there. Because, you, again, surroundings, people, your network, ideas, businesses. Like now, I don't discuss people. I don't do anything like that. We discuss businesses, family, uh sounds boring but the most important stuff absolutely absolutely you what you're gonna what you're gonna gain about talking about next person i ain't got time i thought you leave my house there some if, if you're not talking to me about bread sorry translate if you're not talking to me about a good business deal that, you, that i think's valuable to me and my family or is an asset which ain't gonna make me lose i'll leave my house but i'm not i'm not just going to go and sit with a guy in, in a bar or a club to have a night out for the sake of a night out. I'll go, I'll go on a night out if we're going to network. But after my network is done, I'm I'm now the first person to leave. Whereas before, I'll be the last guy to leave at 5, 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. I'll probably leave. I'll be at a club max an hour and I'm out. How long did you um, do the job for in terms of, um, you know, the individual footballers? <sighs> Too long. Too long. Um, and I had to make a decision I still did now once in blue moon but it's like you have to know when you, to hang things up it's like a footballer like, when he reaches his peak and he's, he's won everything I feel in that particularly in that air in that air in that area and in that area I've achieved everything very quick so I already achieved everything and I was just still doing it you know just being comfortable doing it doing it and just thought so what made the change happen me Growth. I said, I have to grow. I so all of a sudden, was you out of the phone book like from these people? And stuff? No, no, no. Or, we still speak. Now everything's still cool. I've got really close relationships. You know, I go to weddings and Did, did you hold on to the contacts and say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll my, send my one phone of my book, other boys? My phone book is crazy. And I can ring up anybody and they say, the love's not lost. We're cool. But they've got the next generation now that'll do stuff for an Instagram post. I can't run around for an Instagram post. I'm not even going to entertain it. I'm, I'm not. But that's the world we're living in now. Everyone tries to get things for a swap, you know, and different added values of ways. But uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd done the graph from the ground up. So what was the next step for you then? The next step for me was um, growing businesses that are online, um, 
digital film companies getting into film, which I'm wanting to do, uh, and grow from that. What inspired you getting into film? I've always had the, I've always had that opportunity, always, but I've not took. I've, I was a bit close to it because I was so obsessed with making sure that everyone else was okay. So if I was to get a ping in Italy, and someone said, "Yeah, thank you, come see me," I'd be on the plane in Venice now, just like that, bang. That they used to call me like James Bond. Then I was just always on a little mission going somewhere, and it, it just got to a stage. Where I said, "No, nah, nah, I've got to focus on me now. I'm just do the things that I want to do." And to do that, you need self belief. It's a big, big risk, big risk because I've risked everything that I've built up and all the achievements I've won, all the awards, this, that, everything. I just said to myself, listen, Dan, you've got to just do you now. And that's it. So if, if they like it, cool. If they don't like it, it's still cool because I'm doing what I'm doing. Because one thing is, when you're in that football world, when someone changes club, they're not asking you, um, is it all right? Do you think it's all right for me to change club? Then when they change club, you lose a client. Then you lose an income, potentially. No one don't think about that. Then what? So, so don't forget, I had the biggest players at the time, biggest names globally on, on the map then. But then they go to this country, that country, that club, that club, the, you know, that happens. And then obviously others come on board and the, the revenue share goes down because they're not going to pay as much because someone has as much money. And then you start, and then I, I had like guys that were doing, that were involved with like high net worth, like members clubs and businesses and oil and gas and buildings, property and things like that. So that was a different kind of, flow of income and circle as well so when you're in that circle there's different conversations then you're listening to there and it goes on and on and on but films were something that I wanted to do so now we've just done I've just done two films um, once Fire Rises that's just been completed so that's going to be out anytime now so we've got a private screening then that's going to get uh, distributed like 42 to 47 countries globally wow. I've just done Rise of the Foot Soldier um, business by Terry Stone uh, called Vengeance. It was Take Two Days of Blood. Now I changed the name. I was actually just come from there today, straight from the the studio in Wardour Street. I come straight here. So i yeah, but I love it. This is what I want to do, and I know that I'll be successful. What sort of roles do you like to play? My roles are always quite similar. You know, the the, the smooth looking gangster, uh, that kind of role. But I like to fully step out of come not step out of comfort zone because obviously I've done two films, but um, I like. I like challenges. Okay. What is some of like your favorite films? Like your like what sort of genre? Obviously, I'm like? half Italian, so all the the traditional the, the Italian Goodfellas and the the Scarfaces and stuff like that. I'm quite an uh, I like the old school stuff. I grew up around that genre, so I like the films. Where did this vodka bottle come out from? Yeah, so again, you know, it's, just, it, it's different circles, um, have conversations, so it's not just my brand. There's a few, there's a few partners involved in it. Um, and it just goes with the lifestyle that that I know and that I've, I've got the connection for the distribution and the clubs and, and so forth. It's how, a vodka. How it's much a, input did, did you have in this? Uh, visually, a lot. Okay. How many different colours? We've got uh one, two, three at the minute and we and we've got two we've got two new ones coming up and that uh, and they're all different flavours. All different flavours. It lights up, uh which I think is quite cool for the clubs. And then I've got the vape, uh Zap. So these are the first ceramic vapes in the UK. So it's a cleaner smoke basically. Um same amount of puffs, same price as the vapes you see now, but this is a, a much more smoother um, And you said you sell it in this like Package? No, this is the uh, this is our like a uh, our display box. So if you was to buy it and, and uh, have it in store, okay. it comes like this. But we uh, we do wholesale as well uh, uh, globally, and we also do uh, liquids as well. But these are these are the first ceramic uh, vapes that are disposable. But then I've got liquids as well. So and we've got a factory in Manchester and in China, um, and we do wholesale and then we do individual sales like online e-commerce and we also do if you've got like I don't know ten, five, six shops uh, we can spy them. How do you come up with something like this? Again, it's the right place, right time, a conversation. Uh, uh, this took about three months. We just had two hundred thousand uh, delivered with these, so these are gonna be heavily involved around the UK, but more of of, of like the higher end vape. Um and and then we've got I say the, I say bread and butter vapes, but we've got like the liquid vapes that 
everyone knows as well. So, yeah. What do you say to people who say like what, vapes are like bad? Fit? They're just as bad. They ain't testing. Fine. I just everyone's got an opinion. That's not going to stop me from what I think's right. What do you think of social media at the moment? Like in terms of like you know, there's a lot of people who show a lifestyle and yeah, yeah. everything. I perfect. think social media. If you use it for the right platform, you can make a ton of money online uh, through social media. But if you're just going to be on there showing off and just trying to portray your lifestyle, it's I don't really post unless it's valid. Unless it's like about business or just about what I'm doing or if there's something coming out. I use mine for that kind of platform. It doesn't mean to say that you can't use it for like personal stuff. Like once in blue moon, I'll post my daughter or something if it's a birthday or something. I wouldn't just generically go on there and just do it and say anything that I'm doing. But I just think it's a great tool for marketing, networking, um, and making money as well. There's one person watching right now and they're yeah. saying, look, what, what can I make like nothing's happening for me yeah it's never been like that for me the people around me don't want to get ahead and you need to be having money or be rich to make yeah. you know more peas and stuff like that what would you say simple man start small and grow simple question just start small and grow where do you start you can just start you can start from five pound 100 pound i bought a business from 86 pound you know into like ten thousand pound in three months and then it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. What if somebody's like, I don't know if I'm an entrepreneur, I don't know if I've got them skills. You see the word entrepreneur, that's a very, I have this, this comes up a lot with me. What would you say under, under entrepreneur is? Somebody who's working for themselves and trying yeah. out different businesses. Okay. For me, an entrepreneur is somebody that takes risks and doesn't want to work a nine to five. I'm not saying, by the way, don't work a nine to five. <laughs> I'm saying if you work a nine to five, there's a cap and it goes back to the ceiling. This ceiling sticks in my head. Maybe it's because how I grew up and I don't want no limits ever around me again. When you work a nine to five and you get paid a set wage, you're limited to how you do. So you're programmed a certain way. When you're an entrepreneur, you, you take risk. You have to go and make the money. So you have to think outside the box to do so. Um, and then you grow and then you build your own sort of a team and then become your own boss um, but you have to grow into that I see a lot of people saying that they're entrepreneurs and I ask what they're doing I'm just like wow is that what you think an entrepreneur is <laughs> but obviously that's the word that everyone's using so everyone throws it about mm -hmm. but um, yeah man I just think you have to take risks in life legal ones um, and just roll the dice man don't be afraid to believe and dream you know but even dreams you have to work towards a dream they're not just going to appear because you said oh I dreamt I've got a five million pound house it's not going to turn up tomorrow people use that word a lot as well manifesting oh, yeah. I'm going to manifest listen manifest. when I was living in a, in, a, in a box room in a flat I always believed I was in a mansion I always dressed my room a certain way always put my shoes in a nice row I just I just knew is things are going to happen you know and you, you have, have to, to. Take, take action though yeah yeah but it's a vision's a very powerful thing even when you're stuck in a in a in a situation, you have to visualize and you know try and manifest what you mean in five years. If you if if you actually done a a toll chart and ask somebody where you're gonna be in five years, ninety eight percent, maybe less, don't know what they want. But that's why you're in a situation where you're in. You have to you have to know what you're doing. But it's never too late. Because some people start seeing things later on in life. They change and then start putting on a roadmap and then they just blow. But everyone's at different stages. Is and this it, where your destiny is now in acting? Mine is in acting, producing films, um, businesses that doesn't involve too much movement from yourself. Because I spent my whole life traveling and giving a service. I don't want to be doing that. I want to be able to invest in, in, in businesses that I feel that that's got growth. And there's no refund as well. So part of what I do is obviously is taking something from A to B and having a belief in it that it would ever work. And um e-commerce is so powerful right now. And then you've got property obviously as well, which is cool. We have to do the right deals because some people have been, been caught out. But again, it comes down to knowledge in your circle. I know people that bought housing, it's gone upside down, they're never in debt and they just want to, you know, it's the worst thing. But I've got some people that have just got a portfolio that's, 
Dubai, England, Ireland, this place, that place, and they're flying. So it just comes down to your circle, really, and and and, and knowledge. But I've always learned outside of school. I've, no one's told me anything. I've learned everything through just my just my circle. Do you think? Um, what do you think of school and uni? Honestly, you have to go to school, obviously. Uh, but we do our school is your choice. But what they don't teach you in school is options. There's a, I feel there's a program, there's a map that they want everyone to go down, and you know having you know four A's isn't going to make you a million pounds. You know having you know going to uni and throwing a hat in the air and getting the grades. I spoke to people before that I've, I've been waitress shopping and. I would have a, the most random conversation sometimes. Like, yes, Dan. Oh, hi, you're right. You know, just meeting them because recognizing all the rest of it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, how you getting on? Like, oh, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, I went uni, I've done this and that. I would never thought I'd be here. And I'm like, yeah, but don't, it's not a bad thing. It's just, you remember going back to the beginning about failure. Some people do things and they think they're going to win after they've done all this roadmap thing that, that everyone's been programmed to do. But when they get there, but then they realize actually there's no exit. I've done all this stuff. I spent all this money on education. There's no exit, but education is important. But it's what education? They need to put in education about business, lifestyle, and risk taking, which they don't do. So it's like football. If you try to be a footballer and you're playing for Arsenal from 12 years old and then you get released at 15, where'd you go from that? Some people fall. Some people say, do you know what? I'll be a football coach. Or, you know, they find other, other, other angles. Well, not like that. Do you think because you've started from very humble beginnings that you're more of a risk taker? For me, there's really there's been risk, but there hasn't. When you come from nothing, there isn't anything that's a risk here. Because you've already taken the risk already every day. Survival is a risk. Thing can happen every day. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean stuck in a in in a in a bubble and in a bad environment, for you to get through that every day, you have to take risks. Just to try and get out of there and just, you know, have a a clearer picture for, for where you want to be and, and your family wants to be. Mm. But some people haven't had that. How important is travelling? Important. Important. Seeing different places and meeting new people is important. I think networking is the most important thing you can do. Where where are some of the best places to network? Like, how do you network? What's, what's, tell us some of your secrets. <sighs> I don't really have secrets. I just... You've got a very big network. You're, yeah. You're, you're the master of networking, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah. So it's just, again, it's the right place, right time. Uh, friend referrals. Like, someone might say, yeah, speak to Dan. He, he's doing that. So, and then we speak. And then I always say, when I go and do a deal, let's say I've gone to sell a vape or I'm speaking about film. By the time I finish that conversation, there could be a property deal up. I'm not even going to talk about property and now we're chatting about doing a deal on property like it's crazy like it's just I've had so many coffee meetings that I've just gone to a whole other level and then again you get introduced to more people then it goes on and on and on and then all of a sudden you're building your network building your network and then you're doing a bit here a bit there then, you, then you're growing and you're getting involved in things keep moving keep talking 100% it's, 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 it's important but I think growing up sometimes you're kept in a box and the teacher is keeping a box I, I don't do that I break rules like that I'm not saying no box I want to ask you, what's been your biggest failure? Uh, time. Putting time in, 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 into the wrong things and sometimes when you think you're winning and you're travelling around, you're losing time because you're not seeing your kids and that can affect things and those are the things that no one talks about as well. So time for me is the most important thing. So I think putting time into the wrong things uh, and maybe valuing the wrong things at at the time when that wasn't really the true value of what I should be valuing. But growing up young and not having that again, the guidance and anyone in my ears, you have to kind of like pivot through. But through the pivoting, obviously, I've I've took many losses and I've lost things and I've damaged relationships in the past. Um, the time with the kids becomes less, and you know now I'm 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 understanding more. But it's a journey, man. It's, it's it's a long road. So, again, I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm learning day by day. Mm. And I surround myself with people that are not got what I want. That's the wrong word. But when people when people have families and you see it, you do want that. But I wouldn't want the same. I'll create my own, mm. and I'll try and build 
my own happiness within that. But a strong woman does help. So we were talking a little bit about yeah. we touched on relationships yeah. um, uh, and that sort of to- topic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What helps an entrepreneur like yourself? Like I you just know, think um, the basics woman... in life: having one woman, a good woman. What's uh, a good woman? A good woman that understands you. You are. I'm quite a complicated character for a female. So when you've got someone that understands you and they encourage your goals and your dreams and they believe in you and you believe in them, you open up more. Uh, trust is a major thing. Um, yeah, I, th- I think a stable home really helps you because when you've not had that, you're forever chasing that. Yeah. And sometimes you chase it and it, it turns out not to be that and then you give up and you go again and again and then you're trying to you're searching, searching. But I just, I just think you just have to just do you and then, happiness comes and that's what I'm doing now I'm doing what I'm doing I've got a nice female I've got a nice missus kid and whatnot I'm, I'm happy man I'm cool what have you learned from your relationships in terms of like you know ah oh, loads there's a big list of things I didn't was you know. searching for something in a woman differently before than you than you I think sometimes you know? I think sometimes when you've got an absent I wouldn't say absent mum but I, I would say because I've had an on and off relationship uh, you're, you're you're forever trying to find that missing thing and guess what you're never going to find it yeah so you think the missing thing is yourself so when you find yourself and you realise the happiness that you're searching for you, you you as a person can only create that you can't go and find happiness it's like going to shop into Louis Vuitton I want them lubes you can find it you can't go and find happiness you've got to create it and that's what I've done it's, it's taken a while but I'm there slowly getting there do you like a, a woman who has like more, I don't know, like that that missing feeling of that love from my mum? No, I think I, I think at the start, yeah. So it was a bit heavy for me on relationships because obviously I was not demanding, but expected my that the absence that that was there. Now I I don't expect anything. I'm just doing I'm just doing me, and it's working that way and. I'm getting what I what I want without demanding it or expecting it because that person's like that. So sometimes if, when you're walking in, in a situation, back then, I'd never think, oh, that girl looks nice. Her mum must be blood. You don't think that. You just go steaming in. Yeah, blah, blah. And then it opens up and it's not that, it's not this, it's not that. And you're like, oh, you're not happy. But for me, to find someone that, that, that's got a, a big family that's happy and they show you what family's about, you, you have to check it and think that's mad because not all families like that either mm-hmm. the type bonded family so you think right look, I need to create something for myself where I'm happy and, and, and that's what I'm doing do you think it's important to find somebody who's like, like how do you find somebody who's compatible to you like do you I don't think you be... can really find someone like that do, do you there's think... no I don't think there's a blue book that says if you find this girl she's going to be like this I just think you just meet somebody and then you build and this is what I say, like, a lot of girls out there will say, oh, I'm a rich guy. A rich guy's not got time for you. He's already there. He's doing his thing. He ain't going to go for you because you want a rich guy. He ain't going to bow down because you want to be the guy or vice versa. But when you're building from the ground up, mm-hmm. special times, man. Yeah. Special times. And that's what makes people building from, again, anything. It's like building a house. You sort you sort the ground out. You make sure that's, that's, that's right. You get it checked and you build, 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 build. And then you build something special. And then after this, you're like, you know what? Look at that. Same thing. Yeah, I like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> like people like Conor McGregor, like yeah. you know, he's been with his girlfriend for a wife. Long Conor time. smashed it, man. Honestly, no, like yeah. that relationship is just crazy. She yeah. believed in him when he was, he was plumbing. Yeah, earning no money, couldn't pay the yeah. rent. She's reaping the benefits now. But you know what it is? He did not listen to anybody. He believed in himself, and he got what he wanted. And that's what I religiously tell people and I'll tell you the same thing you've got to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in you no one else is going to believe in you yeah I like that I want to just touch on one more subject before yeah. we sort of wrap up and that's AI yeah. A artificial, what? AI Go on. artificial intelligence so like yeah. these podcasts used to take people four hours switching from your face to my face to yeah. you know the, the, the wide angle and then syncing the audio and everything yeah now 
just one app, boom, one minute is all done. It's just love that. It's it's detected my voice here, and I tell it this face is to do with that voice. Yeah. One one minute it's all done. Sick. So you just cut out a hundred quid worth of editing costs, etc. Yeah. It's done really fast. But you're in the acting game and yeah. you know, you do these face filters, next minute you're getting all chiseled, yeah, yeah, and now they're like, you're looking like other people. I don't know what the rules and regulations around this, but what if somebody goes, Daniel's a good looking guy. I think he's a good actor, but we don't want to pay him. Let's take his features and just put it on another actor and we'll make it look like Daniel. Cause I think yeah. they've done that for the, Vin, one of the Vin Diesel films or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that can so, happen to me. I, I, I won't be having that man. I'm, I'm, listen, <laughs> I'm involved in the film game now. And I've said that I'm, I'm going to become a household name. Full yeah. stop. Um, I'm, I'm surrounding myself with people that have been in the game for 10, 20 years. And I've absolutely smashed it through the park with me. Um, and I'm I'm very, 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 very on job with this. And I'm le- I'm learning as I'm going. So we just advise the foot soldiers as well. Some great actors in there. Craig Fairbrass. Like, there's a list of names that I can see. Uh, Jamie Foreman, Jeff, Joe. There's, there's loads um, that have been in the game for a long time. And you pick up and learn as you go along. There's no book to say how to be an actor. Mm. You have to, it pushes me to boundaries because sometimes I could be on a spot and I say, do something. You have to do it there and then. If you can't practice it, you got to do it. And if you don't, it's cut. So how, it's. How do you remember all your lines? It's part of it, it's part of the job. It's, it's uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's scripted. That takes a talent in itself because you're, you're you see, going back to not having, having nothing, this is where it kicks in now. Some of the, 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 some of the acting, you have to go on people's emotions. So when they finish their line and they're doing a certain thing or they're moving a certain way or they get into a certain situation to make their character, then your bit's in. So I learned how to read people. So there's bits and pieces throughout my life that I'm taking and involving it into what I'm doing now. It's a new chapter for me. I'm excited for the journey. You know, Netflix, blockbuster films. I've got red carpet premieres in my Bay Area, London, Leicester Square. I've got about 10 red carpets, LA, Miami, Italy. I've got a busy year this year. You know, we're, we're, we're active. Um, Are but, you going to be venturing into that like, Hollywood? I want to start. I'm saying it straight face, that's what I want. I'm seeing all these major guys doing, you know, ha- having stars and they've taken 10 years. I'm trying to get mine in a lot, in a lot less. So it just means I'm going to outwork everybody. Simple. And what sort of roles do you want to play? I'm quite open. I'm quite open to the roles. I like to always push myself to, to to limits and always I've got this thing in my head to never be in my comfort zone. I think it comes from being in that, you know, that tiny box and being told there's a ceiling. I like to be pushed into doing things that I don't want to do. Because then I'm breaking my boundary and I'm expanding and growing and I'm not experimenting, but I'm just you know, you become a full character then you're doing different things. But um at the moment obviously I'm into the crime movies, which is big. Everyone loves a crime film. Everyone loves the Al Pacino, the right. Pesci's, the Goodfellas. Right. Everyone loves crime it's films. Instinct, if you look man. on Netflix now, yeah, it's mad because it's literally crime films. Then after crime films, it's other film. Everyone just goes that, to that section. At the minute, that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm excited though. Would you try Bollywood? I'm open to it. It just depends. Because you've got a singer song in there, you've got to do the dance moves in there. You've listen, man. The listen, uh, listen. I'm half Italian, bro, so I'm active. I can do the whole the, the whole salsa, and I I can get done, man. So I'm open to things, but obviously there's a cert, there's you know the, there's a limit to things that I'll do and, and not do. I've been asked for some things. I said that nah, because I, I like to place myself in a certain position and grow from that position. Mm. Here's a difficult question, or it might not be a difficult on, question. It could be quite simple. Yeah. You've got a missus now. Yeah. What if a role requires you to be, you know? Yo, listen, <laughs> listen. Do you know the amount of people that have said that to me? Because listen, everyone knows my missus, man. She's a staunch Irish girl in it. So, yeah, obviously, if it is, I don't know, man. I have, to, I have to work it out. But obviously, if it's too full on, then no, I'd, I'd ask for that. Nah, but she's cool, you know. That like, she understands what's what with that with the filming. You know what I'm trying to say so here's the question for yeah. you imagine she got a part yeah. in a movie now and she had to lip somebody I'll be honest that's a bit heavy but <laughs> uh, it is what it is I suppose 
there's limits though, isn't it? There's limits, but we'll just have to see what's what's what. It's funny to say it because her new song, her new song, um, oh, she's a singer. Yeah, so my mistress, she's a pop star, um, H Duo and uh, Love Shine. She's in a band called Platinum, so she's got a track as well. Uh, that's in one of my films as well, and they put that in. It's like a crime scene. I'm yet to see it. I'm dying to see it. So there's a private screening soon in, in London. So that's cool. And she's got a new single coming out as well. Quick plug there, babes. But yeah, but yeah, man, it's cool. So she's busy doing her stuff as well. Uh, I go to a festival, like she's singing in front of that 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 people that go. Brilliant. So that's that's exciting. And then our daughter, she, um, one last festival that she brought her out and she's waving around at the Cree and she's talking full of confidence. But Brilliant. I like that because again she's seeing it and then she going on stage and she's building confidence. I definitely think she's, she's even an actor or singer because she's just she's doing crazy stuff in a minute. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, because man. you're not putting any barriers in. Nothing, you know, because no forcing, nothing. She's just she actually walks around singing "Hates the Road" around the house. I'm like, chill out. You're four tomorrow. It's her birthday tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, she walks around singing her mum's songs and then she points to the TV, "Mum, your song," you know, or if I'm telling dad, that's you, and but she's fully in the fold, so it's almost like no, it's normal, but it's normal to her. So the fact she's coming out of a show and she's really confident, I love it. Absolutely love that, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Where do you see see yourself in 10 years? 10 years? Uh, the serial entrepreneur involved in uh, these businesses that I'm doing. There's a few other businesses that I'm doing as well. They'll be flourishing really well. Um, I, I see myself having a star where where I need to be involved in some big films and just, and, and just growing, man. Keep growing. Keep growing. I don't want to float my boat too much, but I've got some plans ahead and uh, I'm looking forward to everyone to follow my journey and and, and, and just see what's going on. Mm, nice. Do you wish there was a question I asked you or, or a topic? No, I think you've you've actually touched on a few things that I've never actually been asked on a, on, on a, on a camera. Amazing. Which kind of opens up a little bit because I'm quite, I'm quite closed character. I don't really go outside of what I need to do. So it's good sometimes to be, again, you know, pushing to limits and stuff. But I respect what you're doing. I like the hustle. And uh, I wish you all the, success, all, the, all the success in your podcasting and your, and your properties. <laughs> Make that 10 mil, 20 mil next time I see you. And uh, yeah, so man. It's, it's all in motion. You know, we, yeah. we, we don't stop. You know, you, yeah. there's, there's, but a, there's properties a is But is, is, is ongoing. It's, it's a on, it's, it grows it's, continuously without you even doing It's much. ongoing, but, you know, when you turn yourself into a product, then yeah. it's more... It's more. It's not. It's less about you sometimes as well. And I'm like, yeah. If I've done this and I've done it from nothing, mm. why can't I make more people like this? Hundred percent. You know, and it's it comes about influence because yeah. sometimes you earn that next grand that comes in. It doesn't really make yeah, a difference. I always say money don't change anything, man. You know what I'm saying it's 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 a mindset, and then once you're in in a position where you can give back and help, that's an amazing thing as well, man. That if somebody I'm, turns around and goes, "Thank you," and I didn't know that. And now I'm gonna go and try that. It's like. I could have changed that person's life. Yeah, sick. Love just in that. one moment. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That, that's where it all really comes from. It's like, that's what I'm looking for. Um, but, you know, I do think it's important to go back to your childhood. I'm still coachable. I'm 37 now. But I remember uh, just last weekend, I went to a, an event. And, I'm, and, and, and people can laugh at some of these events that I go to. Like, it's all about the mind and unlocking and unleashing your power. Yeah. But I'll be honest, like... I didn't even cry in 2003 when my mum's father passed away. Not, 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 not that I wasn't, so I wasn't upset about it. I was, but I'm like, you had a good life. I had a good time with you. But I'm just from that sort of era. Mm. But this weekend, we had to close our eyes. We went through a lot of neurological stuff and programming. Mm. And, and we went back to our childhood. And it was like, yeah, you look at your old house, the door. Oh, look, yeah, remember yeah, that yeah. key? Let's go imagine in. though, because I drive past my old place sometimes on purpose. I'll just park, I'll just park up and sit there and look at it. Not even, not even speak. And just drive and, and just think, yeah, just keep going down. Dan, I want to, oh, oh, there is one last question yeah, I want to ask you. So you're outside your old house. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at that house and just imagine walking in there and imagine walking into your bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And you see this little 12 year old and then you get closer and it's you. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks back at you right yeah. in your eyes. What would you like to say to that little kid? Never stop dreaming. Just that. 
Wicked, man. I love that, man. Look, if you can look straight into your yes. uh, camera, let everybody know how they can follow you. And yeah, man, hit me up on, on Instagram, at I am Daniel J on Twitter, at I am Daniel J. Um, TikTok, I've just joined. I'm not too great on that, but yeah, it's underscore I am Daniel Johnson. Hit me up, follow my journey. We've got two new films coming out. We've got great products available and, and more coming. Never stop dreaming. Dream big, be unrealistic. There we go, guys. I hope you really enjoyed that one. It was a little bit of a different podcast. But look, we're getting all different kinds of people. We've got boxers. We've had UFC fighters. We've had proper entrepreneurs in terms of real estate. But it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's all about, you know, where did you start? And how do you find your path to success? Because it's not one glove fits all. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, leave us a comment and share this with somebody else. And we'll join you on the next one where we'll get another smashing guest. Peace.